And in this lesson, we're going to be building a responsive toggle menu. Here's what we're going to be building specifically. This is what my page is going to look like on a large screen, but when I get down to a small screen, you can see that the menu becomes hidden or disappears. It no longer displays in the footer like it did in the last exercise. It's completely hidden from view until the user clicks the menu icon, which will open the menu and then the user can use it and if they're done they can just hide it. So the advantage of this technique is that the menu is completely hidden from view. It's not taking up any real estate on your screen at all unless you actually need it to display in which case it does open up. The starting file that we're going to be working with looks like this. So it's the same page that you're familiar with but I've stripped out much of the navigational styles and we just have our unordered list. Let's look at the code the HTML is something that we've been using in the last several lessons, so you're already familiar with that. We have a nav with a class of navigation. It appears in between the header and the aside. And the CSS that we're currently using on our navigation is non-existent. I have removed it all from this particular lesson so that we can start from scratch since this uses some particular styles that are different from what we've done in the last several lessons. There's many ways that you can create toggle navigation. Most of them use JavaScript. In this particular lesson though, I'm going to show you a method that doesn't use JavaScript. This technique is going to collapse or hide the navigation section and then later we're going to be able to turn it on with a toggle. So we'll be incorporating some techniques to expand or to toggle the navigation section open and to do that we're going to use a technique that is actually referred to as somewhat of a hack. A hack is when you use a specific component or a technique for something that it wasn't intended to do originally and that's what we're going to be doing in this particular lesson. We're also going to be using labels and checkbox inputs which are things that you typically find and use in forms. We're going to use the property of the checkbox to trigger another element, in this case our div that holds the menu. So when the user clicks on the checkbox, that's going to expand or toggle open the menu, and then when they click it again, it's going to collapse. Sounds pretty good, right? Let's add the additional code that we're going to need. We'll leave our nav tag as is, but we're going to wrap the entire nav tag inside of a div. And I'm going to give this div an ID of nav as well. I'll make sure I take the closing div tag and put it after my closing nav tag. So you can now see that the div wraps around the nav. Inside the div we're going to add an input and a label field. My input tag is going to have a type of checkbox. And let's give that an ID of toggle. Next I'll add the label tag and I'm going to set the for attribute to toggle. Then I'll have the text of menu appear and then I'll close the label tag. If we save our page and look at it in the browser, it now appears like this. You can see that I have my label and menu checkbox right here. We're going to use these elements to control the display of our navigation. That's going to be added with our CSS. The first part of the code that we're going to incorporate into our navigation is the same code that we've been using in the last few lessons. We're going to set the background color to gray, we're going to remove the bullets, set the margin and padding to zero on the unordered list, on the list items we're going to have the margin be zero, add a border on the bottom of darker gray, and we're going to tell the anchor tags to be block level and add some padding. If we save and look at it in the browser, our page now looks like this. This is creating the small screen vertically stacked navigation that we're interested in displaying when the user is viewing our site on a small or medium sized screen. The next rule that we're going to add to our CSS is going to be hash nav nav. This is going to be targeting the navigational tag that is a child of our nav div. I'm going to specify that I want the height to be zero and that I want the overflow to be hidden. This is going to make all of the content inside the nav div hidden from view. Essentially this technique is collapsing or hiding the nav section so that we can later turn it on with our toggle. If we save now and look in our browser, you'll see that my menu completely disappears. 
The next code that we're going to be adding in our CSS has to do with the input and label tag. The technique that I'm sharing with you here is called advanced checkbox hack. Originally there was a hack called checkbox hack, but that technique would fail in iOS and Android in certain versions. So the really hacky part that we're going to add in is some WebKit animation styles. And essentially what they do is they're going to fake out Android and iOS browsers of specific versions into thinking that something is actually happening. The first rule that we'll add, I'll put a comment here just to remind myself that these are part of the advanced checkbox hack. The first rule that we're going to be adding is for the body. And what I'm going to be placing here is WebKit-Animation colon bug fix infinite is. Then I'm going to add another rule that is going to say at dash webkit dash keyframes bug fix and I'm going to set the from padding of zero to padding of zero. This sounds pretty hacky because it is. Remember that what we're doing is we're just fooling or faking Android and iOS browsers into thinking that something is actually happening. If you're interested in learning about the ins and outs of this particular technique, you can visit timpytruski.com and he talks all about the advanced checkbox hack. You can read through this if you want to know more about the specifics. I'm not going to cover that in this particular lesson because it's very technical and all we really care about is the fact that it works. I'm just going to add a comment that I'm ending my advanced checkbox hack here. The next selector that we're going to write a rule for is going to be for hash nav input and then we're going to specify that we're targeting the type that is checkbox. What the advanced checkbox hack does is it's going to use the label and the checkbox input which you most typically are going to find with forms. What we're going to do with this is we're going to use the property of the checkbox to trigger another element. In this case the div that holds the menu. So when the user clicks on the checkbox we're going to expand or toggle open the menu and then when they click it again it's going to collapse. This isn't really its intended use, but it does work and it's pretty reliable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be hiding the checkbox entirely using CSS. Then when we click the label, we're going to toggle it off and on. And then we're going to style the div based on the checked state of the input. So let's hide the checkbox off the screen. I'm going to do that by setting my position to absolute. And then I'm going to use top and left values that are ridiculously high something like negative 999 M's for both left and top. This is going to ensure that the checkbox will never be seen. If I save my page now and we look in the browser, you can see that the checkbox has now disappeared. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to style the label. So we're going to use hash nav label and we're going to tell it to display as a block level element. We're going to set the background to an image and I'm going to tell it not to repeat and to position it right and center. Then we're going to use text indent to get rid of the text and we're using the same technique as we used in the last rule of just positioning it 999 M's off the screen. That's going to hide the text. So now if I save and refresh you can see that this menu text it's being replaced with a graphic. You can't see the graphic because the graphic is actually positioned on this white area and my graphic is white. We'll fix that in just a second. Before I do that though I'm going to set the cursor to a pointer so that this displays as a link would. Next we're going to use some specific CSS3 code that is going to incorporate user select of none. What user select does is that it's useful in situations where we want to provide a easier, cleaner experience for the users and not have them accidentally select useless things like icons or images. This is a little bit buggy though, so we need to include our vendor prefixes in order for this to work across the board in the various browsers. And again, this isn't completely necessary, but it's just going to help the end user experience. So we'll add those on to our label box. Finally, I'm going to position the label box relative and I'll set my top value to negative 100 pixels and right value to 8 pixels. This is going to move this label onto the image. If we save and look in the browser now, 
you can see that now my little menu icon displays on top of my image and when I hover over it I get the pointer finger so it looks like it's a link so people are going to know that now they can click it if I click it nothing happens but we'll be solving that in the next set of CSS rules we're going to be using a combinator selector right now Combinator selectors are advanced CSS selectors and what they allow us to do is they allow us to combine certain criteria. In this case, we're using a selector of nav input type equals checkbox colon checked. We're adding the pseudo class of checked. So what it says is if there's an input field with a type of checkbox that has a value of checked and then we're going to use this little tilde and nav and then the, what that says is if it's going to match the second element in this case the nav only if it's preceded by the first in this case the checkbox so we're actually targeting the tag of nav but only when it's preceded by a checked checkbox that also meets the criteria of being inside the div of nav and is an input field that's pretty cool. We can use this and then if we just change our values that we wrote up above where we hid our nav by using height of zero and an overflow of hidden, what we'll do is we'll change the height to auto and we'll also just reiterate that we want the overflow to be hidden so that nothing else displays on our screen. If we save and refresh you can see that when I click my checkbox, it displays the menu. When I click it again, it goes away. So this is working perfectly. What we've done with CSS only is we've created a navigational menu that toggles on and off by just using HTML and CSS in a way that we might not always use it, but it works beautifully and we're not even using any JavaScript. I love this solution, it's great. Now, when my page gets big, the page is still going to function in this way. What we want to do is we want to incorporate some rules inside our media query to disable the functionality that we have on the small screen. We want the menu just to display in a horizontal way. Let's make those CSS rules next. I'm going to come down into my media query that we already have for the large size screen right here and we'll create some CSS. So I'll make a quick comment here that this is going to be rules for my navigation. And then I'm just going to specify a few short rules. On the div with a ID of nav, we're going to set our padding to zero. I'm going to prevent the label from displaying by using a selector of nav label and telling it to have a display of none. Next we'll select our nav tag. We want to ensure that this is going to appear back on the screen, so we'll set the height to auto and the overflow to visible. Then just to tidy up my code a little bit, I'm going to use a selector of hash nav ul. We're going to specify that the border and the margin both be zero. I'm going to specify that my list items display as inline objects. That'll ensure that they appear side by side. And we're going to remove the border that we added earlier by just setting the border to zero or specifying that it be none. Either way, it'll work in the same way. And the final rule that I'm going to add is going to be for my nav A. And we're just going to tell these to display as inline blocks. If I save my page and we refresh in the browser, you can now see the large screen looks how we originally set up our page and when I shrink down as soon as it hits the media query we get our little icon and now this creates the toggle menu. This is a really useful technique to use on navigational systems as it hides the navigation and it doesn't take up valuable real estate unless the user needs it.